Howdy folks, for today's video, we're just gonna do a little bit of powder coating of projectiles. And these right here are some of my nine mil projectiles, the 133 grain NOE that I made last night. These are just for plinking, so we're gonna use the shake and bake method. And the shake and bake method with the wire mesh screens or wire mesh trays Sometimes you get little uh, bald spots or whatever where the bullets stick together. Those, from what I've seen, those really don't affect the performance of the bullet, so I don't care about those. They just don't look quite as pretty. But let's go ahead and I'll show you my method of using the shake and bake process. All right, and for the equipment today, we're just gonna be using my little toaster oven here, and I will go ahead and get it preheating. Today is a hot day, so the projectiles are pretty warm as is, but if it was a cold day, what I'd recommend doing is just throwing them in the, the toaster oven for just a brief period of time, like a minute or two or something, just to get it just lukewarm, like just barely warm not hot to the touch but just warm another thing you can do is while you're baking one batch you can throw the rest on top in a tray on top of the toaster oven and it will warm up the projectiles as desired so here i have some gloves to take out the projectiles after they're done baking because they're hot and for the powder today we're going to use the ford light blue and glass clear both of those from powderbythepound.com and for the container i used to use the yogurt containers and sour cream but i found that these little ziploc containers they're made out of the same number five plastic but with that twisty lid that locks on tight then i get less powder uh, coming out when i'm shaking so i really like these things these are great and then glove wise for while i'm measuring powder and handling the projectiles that kind of stuff i just got some harbor freight blue gloves and here we have the dowel or i guess it's a dowel it's a thick one but i use this to tap the projectiles out of the baking trays uh, when we pull them out and you can see also here these are the homemade wire mesh baking trays down below I've got a, a pan for collecting the excess powder when I drop the projectiles in there and we got a little measuring spoon uh, we're not gonna really measure the stuff we're just gonna do it by eyeball but uh, yeah we'll use this to scoop some of the powder out okay and also for water dropping the projectiles after they have baked. We got this little water tray with a little wire mesh. I, I think it's a, a baking or grill uh, tray. Anyways, we use this. <laughs> it, it fits in there perfectly, which is quite nice. And then I usually throw this on top to uh, just, I'll show you later when we're done baking, but this holds the baking tray while you tap the projectiles out. And here we have the trusty nasty towel that we use. Don't use your towels that you uh, bathe with or whatever, your fancy ones. Your wife might not be too happy about that. But yeah, this is just an old towel that I use to dry the projectiles after, dry them after we're done baking them. And then, I have these two crescent wrenches to uh, help break apart any of the projectiles that are stuck after after the baking. So, and that's all sitting on top of the back of my truck, which is a great shelf. It's always there. Okay, let's get started. So I'll start with uh, getting these gloves on. Oh, that's what happens when you reuse them over and over and they just get old.
Okay, we'll just throw a little bit of a uh, little bit of the white or the glass clear, a little bit of the blue, and let's go ahead and throw. We're gonna do about half of them right now. Yeah, I really like these lids. They're they make it so the powder stays in. And you really don't have to shake them too long and they turn out pretty good. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more. Okay, we only need one of these trays, so I'll put this one, see which one's bigger. Well, we'll use this one. Okay, now the excess powder that goes through and goes in the pan, you can actually reuse that. And I usually do a couple batches of leftovers. So anyways, let's go ahead and dump these. And then just spread them out. Try and get them so they're not stacked on top of each other. And then just slide them right in to the preheated oven. I like to bake these for about 10 minutes-ish after the powder starts melting and it looks liquidy or shiny. So we'll just throw it in there for about 12. It usually takes a couple minutes for it to, to look like that. And in the meantime, let's get the next batch ready. Now it's excess, we're gonna dump it right back into this jar. And we can use this stuff for the, the next batch. Now I'm pretty much done with these gloves, so I'm gonna take them off. All right, now it's only been baking for just a couple minutes and we'll take a look. You can see how they look a little bit liquidy. That means it's it's good to go. And we'll just extend it for about a minute. So now we're gonna bake it for 10 minutes. All right, just gotta get the gloves on. Okay, you gotta be fast. Okay, and then we'll reset that. Throw on the next batch. Look at all these good ones. Bullets are ready for sizing. Now, now sometimes you get these ones that are stuck like this. A lot of times you can just twist them apart. Sometimes they're a little more stuck and you can use the wrenches to get them off. Look at all these pretty bullets. All right, and that, my friends, is how I powder coat my projectiles. 
Thanks for watching. Stay safe and have fun.